fluff, no bullshit. All right, hey there, guys. Today we're gonna talk about fuck ups, and uh, I've had a lot of those through the years. Um, so I'm gonna gradually gonna reel you in. I want to talk about uh, a particular fuck up that you know could have been avoided. I think at least, uh, at least to some extent. So. The reason I'm talking about those fuck-ups is going to be that I want to show you or to tell you about the mistakes that I've made. And if you ever end up in a situation like me, you would have the option to maybe remember this and say, holy shit, total or fucked up this way. So maybe if we don't do it, we are not going to fuck up. I mean, it's not relevant to any situation. Of course, there's loads of variations in every business, every situation, but... You know, it's just a way of for me to give you a little bit of my experience. So, most of these fuck ups, I have to say, have been very, very positive for my development in terms of an entrepreneur. Because every fuck up gives you something that stays with you for life and you always go back to it and you know some people make the same mistakes some people don't i mean you know the saying uh that smart people uh learn from uh other people's mistakes that's the best way to go about it i mean you don't need to make the mistakes yourselves in order to to know that uh the fire's hot so anyway uh, I'm going to talk to you about a little business that I had a while, while back. Um, I was actually the um, representative of a big Canadian brand for boxing and MMA equipment. Uh, it was called Rival Boxing. And um, I started this business back in the day here in Bulgaria. Uh, I, I got in touch with these guys just through a catalog that was... Uh, long story short, there was like absolutely no good boxing equipment in Bulgaria. I was into boxing at that time. So what we used to do was um, we used to import stuff from the States, just like boxing gloves and, you know, hoodies, all the apparel, all that stuff. Like whoever's into boxing wants to look like he's into boxing. So, you know, the whole shebang. And um, I put some money together from a previous business that I had. And I decided that I'm going to become the representative for Bulgaria for this big company called Title Boxing, which had their own brand, but they were also selling like all the other brands as well from the boxing industry. And I called these guys up. I had like, I put together like fifty thousand dollars, and I thought, you know, that's I'm a big deal. I'm gonna use that fifty k in order to become like the distributor for Bulgaria. Call these guys up, and I'm like, hey guys, can I become your distributor? Blah blah blah. There you go like yeah sure i was like i can make an order a first order of fifty thousand dollars they're like wow great let's do it and then we got to the point where i told them i was in bulgaria and they're like holy shit where the fuck is that and uh they just told me that they don't do export like if i'm in the u.s they would work with me but since i'm in a country that they don't even know where the hell it is they wouldn't work with me so i was a little bit disappointed kept on browsing through the catalog like in the middle of the catalog, I, I get onto this very innovative looking, very technical boxing brand called Rival Boxing. Now, mind you, this is happening somewhere around 2005, something like that. And right now, Rival Boxing is one of the biggest brands out there. I mean, you got all the like Anthony, Joshua, everybody is boxing with Rival Boxing gloves right now. I mean, it's a huge brand now. But back then, they were just starting. They had like three models of boxing gloves and that was it. So I get on the phone. I call them up. And now I'm shaking up from from title boxing. I was like, you know, trying to be humble and everything. I was like, hey, guys, uh, I'm calling from Bulgaria. I got $50,000. Would I be able to be your distributor? And they were like, hell yeah, man, like $50,000. Wow. You know, these guys were just starting out. And for them, I was a big client. So... So that's how it kicked off. Uh, I became the distributor at first for like five countries, like Bulgaria and the countries around it, like Romania, Serbia, Greece, Turkey, that part. But these guys were so far from from Europe that they didn't even care what countries I put in the contract. So at one point after I, I made the first order for 50K, 
started selling that gradually but then i saw the opportunity to actually become the european distributor for rival boxing so i told him like hey i'm ready to do a second order i could do like a bigger order let's let's put down in the contract a few more countries so we put like every country in europe signed the contract started selling then i came to my first fuck up which is being like having a brand like this and being based in bulgaria like for one or another reason, people don't trust us that much. So whenever I was calling up people from Germany, France, and, uh, you know, Western Europe, and I was telling them that the business is in Bulgaria, that was it. Nothing was happening. So at one point, I just decided to close the shop here and take everything, like all of my stock and inventory that I had, take it all to the UK and restart the business there. So I moved everything to Edinburgh. Uh, where my dad used to live and where I studied whenever I was in uh, in university. So moved everything there, started the business from there, got a warehouse, slowly, gradually started selling that the goods. And things really changed for me being based in the UK. Like there was no trust issues. Everything was getting delivered very fast because from Bulgaria, it used to take like three weeks to get to Western Europe. From the UK with their developed uh, postal and like um, courier services everything was flying out and everybody was getting their stuff the next day so it was very dynamic and flexible which ended up becoming a very good business two years down the line i was going to trade shows in um, in germany there was like a, a really cool sports show called ispo in germany for like sports equipment so i was like investing everything that I was making in terms of profit from selling the boxing equipment, I was reinvesting everything into the marketing of the brand. So I was paying for those trade shows myself. I mean, Rival, the HQ in Canada, they were just happy to be there. They weren't paying a single cent for it. I was doing all these like awesome stands and I was, I was investing everything that I was making. I was investing money into magazines that were like um, Boxing Monthly and uh, Fighters Only magazine in the UK. I sourced out a few magazines like uh, around Europe that were like to do with like UFC and boxing. So I was investing all that money to develop this brand and it was going well. Like I was I was treating it as though it was my own child. And all of a sudden, five years down the line, because my contract, my initial contract was for five years. Now, this is going back to where I started from Bulgaria. So the years are rolling by. Five years down the, the line, it comes time for me to re-sign the contract. Now I'm thinking, shit, you know, like I'm doing everything I can. There's no reason. Like this is, Rival is actually my baby. I felt as though this was my brand. And uh, I'm thinking like, right, there's not going to be any problems, anything like that. But then... Another thing comes along, like these guys are like, uh, well, Todor, thank you very much. You've done, you know, you've done a lot for us. You've done a lot for the brand. Thank you. But, you know, we think that we can uh, we can do it ourselves now. And that was like uh, just like the, the ground opened up underneath me. And I felt as though I just felt through and I was in no gravity. I didn't know what was happening. It's like somebody stole my child from me but then again it was my mistake i didn't i didn't plan for any of this i never thought to talk to them about uh equity or something like that for me you know i was just such a a huge part of the brand that you know i felt as though i was irreplaceable i thought that i was uh, you know it, it all meant that i'm gonna be there forever but there you go that shows you that uh it's not always the case and um, since then it's been very hard for me to imagine even to actually work for another brand or something like that like to develop another brand so this is a life lesson for me uh, first of all if you're gonna invest that much energy and that much of your um, I don't know of your DNA because I was literally doing everything for that brand i mean i've done more for that brand than i've done for my own brands that have come afterwards in the years so i don't know the moral of the story here is put some stuff on paper talk to the people that you're working with try and get something in return in advance 
not not in return, but like in advance, try and and negotiate your place in a company wherever you're gonna be investing your time, wherever you're gonna be investing your energy and you, your full DNA and everything that you got. Try and make something out of it. For me, I don't know. I mean, I, I felt cheated. I felt cheated out of this. I just felt it as my own. It's like. I don't know, I almost felt like Steve Jobs or whatever, they chucked him out of Apple, you know, like it's, it felt like they're taking your child away from you. So yeah, this is it. This was one of my fuck ups. Uh, there's plenty of more to comes. Um, I guess it could have been avoided if I was a little bit smarter and, and if I tried to talk to the people up front and tell them that, you know, like my dedication to that is going to be like a, a longer term thing or or just to secure a longer contract or whatever it was going to be there, there were ways to to avoid this but as i always say if uh, if if a relationship is falling apart there's no contract or any document that could hold two parties together so so that's it that was one of my one of my fuck ups that was rival and uh, I sat on my ass. I thought, again, I told you, I had to restart everything. My baby was taken away from me. I had to, I had to give birth once more and uh, get my own baby going. So, yeah, that's it. Think about stuff like that whenever you're working for a different brand or what, whenever you're uh, developing something that's not complete yours. And think about how to sort of secure yourself or even how to... Put your eggs in different baskets because this was the only basket that I was putting my eggs in at the time. And once that basket falls, all the eggs break and you have to restart from zero. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you liked it. And uh, I'll be back with more fuck up soon.